Now, I don't want to uh, do too much because obviously, just so you guys know, by the numbers is coming. It's probably going to happen on the weekend, certainly no later than Monday. Let me just tell you the plan for by the numbers because obviously we've got to do catch-up shows anyway. So me and Duncan definitely want to talk about uh, all of the drama that went down because there was a lot of it and a lot of it was bullshit and it was one of the most like challenging events i've ever worked and it wasn't a, it wasn't a lot of fun behind the scenes it was in fact the opposite this was it was a throwback major in the sense that this was like something from 2015 this event was really bad if it wasn't like for like each other and the crew it would have broke apart for sure so we're going to talk about all of that. I'm going to talk a little bit about it today. I don't know if it's the juicier parts, and obviously you won't get Duncan's views. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to, I think, pre-record what I'm going to call the Green Room Edition, which is talking about all the drama around the event. And then we will uh, record live what we thought of the major in terms of the games and the storylines. We'll stream that. And then a day or two after, we're going to do the roster main, uh, the r roster mania by the numbers special because everyone's changing roster. So you're going to get about six hours of by the numbers in about I don't know three four days. Vod editing notwithstanding. So that's how we're doing it. And the reason we're pre-recording the drama stuff is just in case, like with Twitch's rules, I don't know what the rules are about criticizing like partnered entities and individuals on their platform, but we're going to go hard in the paint. Because me and, me and Duncan were pretty, like, we were really pissed off at the event uh, with a lot of shit that went on. So, just in terms of where I've been the last couple of days, basically, if you don't know what happens at an event, <laughs> right, uh, everyone gets sick. And everyone gets sick because of, you know, the hours and everything that you work and all it takes is one person to get a cold. And you just generally run down, your immune system's compromised. Uh, I just wanted to give everybody, like, an idea, right? This is, like, my Fitbit uh, sleep cycle thing. So I'm going to read out all of my sleep days at the major, starting from the day I traveled, Okay. So this, this was my sleep pattern at the major for all of the major days. Uh, two hours and 59 minutes, three hours and 16 minutes, one hours and 54 minutes. That was the second broadcast day. Four hours and 45 minutes, five hours and 39 minutes, six hours and 12 minutes. These were the good days. These were the early finishes. Six hours and 20 minutes, four hours and 40 minutes, Five hours and 58 minutes, six hours and 23 minutes, five hours and 36 minutes, five hours and 16 minutes, five hours and 46 minutes, and then I think the last day, five hours and 27 minutes. So you can see there, not a lot of sleep, and there's a variety of reasons for this. And that's basically, first of all, there were, there were a ton of days that, I mean, I agreed. So to be fair to PGL, they said, do you want to split the hosting? And I said, no, I, I don't really like that idea. A lot of the time it breaks up continuity of the show and, and uh, storylines. Uh, I could have had a day or two off, but it would have extended their budget and it would have brought an extra person into the crew and... We would have had to have argued about, you know, no doubt, once you hire somebody to come in and do relief days, how many days do they want to do on the show? So I was like, fuck it, we'll head all that off at the pass, and basically, I'll just host the show all the way through. So we agreed. So I could have had days off, but I didn't. But the other problem was, I think a large part of why drama occurred at this event is a major should be three weeks, right? With two days off between each stage. That's how it should be done. We've done something similar to that. I think in the past, we're, we're back when it used to be the minor into the major. We had one day off booked into the original schedule. And that was when we were told we weren't going to Sweden. And, and we were told it was impossible to go to Sweden. So we were like, okay, well, we've got a day off. And then we all woke up one day. And we were in our little talent WhatsApp group. And we were like, have you seen this on Twitter? We're going to Sweden. We didn't even get told, by the way. We found out at the same time as y'all that we were going to Sweden. And the travel day was our only day off. We just were like, all right then, no days off for us. And that, that's 100% true. And that should give you an idea of kind of the level of communication we were all operating on at that time. We started off on not a great foot, to be honest, because... 
prior to the event, all the talent was trying to get the event to Sweden, right? We all wanted to do it in Sweden. There was a number of reasons. Obviously, Romania had a huge surge in COVID just before we went. And not everyone, you know, in the talent pool, we've all got different opinions about it. Like me, obviously, I'm booster jab now, but I, I'm a boomer, you know, and they call COVID the boomer remover. So I was a little bit fucking apprehensive about it going to Romania. Other people are vaccinated. Some are just like, listen, it's not a it's not a big deal to me. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. So there's like different degrees of like concern about that. But also as well, we wanted it to be as close to the crowd as possible because we knew that was going to be the meat and drink of it. Also, there was two other things things at play like there was a chance because uh, it's happened in the past that malta was going to go uh, into right so when malta sets a country to the red what they call the red list where as in it's a covid hotspot um you're not allowed to travel there right so we had we had talent that were potentially going to get you know told they couldn't travel the other thing we were worried about is what if we get to romania and Sweden bans Romania because remember Sweden banned the US <laughs> from like people from the US just couldn't go to Sweden for like a couple of months because of the covid cases so then we were like well what if we get stuck in Romania you know what then we all just felt it would be better to just do it in Sweden but coming off the back of TI all the production was all set or oh, so you know so we were told it was all set up and ready to go in Romania so we were like okay fuck it we'll just have to take this one on the chin and then we got told yeah we can go to Sweden anyway literally told it was impossible then we just did it and when we got there uh, because the players had been in Sweden when, when the hotel we were in just loads of rooms <laughs> just loads it, it was it was bizarre the whole thing was bizarre the, the messaging was like really you know fucked up didn't really understand why any of that was happening so anyway no days off <laughs> sleep pattern absolutely ravaged straight into uh problems it started with the travel day right because we get up right well it didn't start with the travel day the travel day is the start of the swedish problems the romanian problems man Obviously, there was a ton of audio issues. You know, it was really frustrating because obviously we were told one of the reasons for doing it in Romania in the first place was that all the studio was all set up there. It's all going to be, you know, it's all good to go. And when we got there, basically the impression I personally got was they hadn't done a lot of prep work because they were all fucked up with doing TI. Not to mention, they were running an Apex Legends event at the same time as well, I think. So that was weird. We fuck it, you know, we were just like, whatever. Then, just as we hit the ground running in terms of like finding a workflow that was sort of working and just fixing the sound, fixing the audio, putting out the fires, because there was literally one day, I think it was day three, we solved all of the problems and then someone touched another soundboard in another part of the bit and just undid all of the work we'd spent three days fixing. I don't even know how that's possible, whatever. So by the time we got a workflow up and running they then had to send people on to sweden to set up the production out in sweden so on uh, for the for going into the second week we would uh, the second phase all the guys had built a rapport with and a workflow with they just basically said right we're off to sweden see ya and i'm going all right bye seb bye all the boys see ya and then they sent in the b team <laughs> which you know, considering it took a while with the A team, I was like, fuck me. So then we sat down, we're doing all this shit. Essentially back to square one. We fix all of that. And then, this, I shit you not, the B, some of the B team had to go. No joke. Some of the B team had to go out there to go help the A team in Sweden. Nearer the event. They sent in the C team. <laughs> I was like, all right. Hello, Mr. C. <laughs> you yeah. know, it was mad. I think I had three separate producers. In the first two weeks of the show. So anyway, <laughs> fuck all of that, because we'll go into more detail about that on By The Numbers. We travel to Sweden on our day off. Traveling is ass. And oh, for some reason, we couldn't fly direct to Sweden. I think it's something to do with that plane that got brought down. There's certain airspace you can't fly, Sweden won't fly over anymore. We had to transfer through Amsterdam or Germany. Now. Germany, I don't know if you've ever been, bit of a bureaucratic shithole, really. Like, like I'm going to just say it, like, I'm not, not a fan in a lot of ways. You know, everything is a bit like, 
a bit it's just a bit too intense with the rules and the regulations you, you know what i mean some of us went amsterdam ship all one of the best airports in the world <laughs> some went germany just bureaucratic nightmare bad times and so we're all traveling like, like, like we're all on different planes i think i was with i was with sponge and machine and then we get a text in our whatsapp group and it's sado saying sorry boys <laughs> not gonna see you there and i'm like he's he's trolling what, what what's he talking about and he said that basically like there was some rule if you go through germany with a passport with his passport like anyway he wasn't in full compliance or some shit we literally find out just as we touch down in was it amsterdam or sweden i can't really remember but anyway we found out after we touched down we're like oh well that's that's fucked everything hasn't it that's like that's fucked up the whole event we we're like what, what are we gonna do about schedule i'll tell you what we'll all have a talk about it when we get to sweden we'll all plan out what we're gonna do and instead we got sent through a revised schedule now we're getting into the drama the caster drama because listen i've worked like maybe one major where there wasn't caster dra i mean listen let's just take a quick sidebar before we get into the meat and drink of this particular drama let's just talk about casters in general they're mad aren't they they're all mental right like listen I, I i keep it real there's this weird fucked up attitude among casters that at any given time old caster duos in particular always think they're sort of the best or certainly when they're on top and they're the most popular that's what they believe going into an event the expectation is always that the best duo will do the finals the prestigious games and so if there's any deviation from that toys get thrown out the fucking pram and i've seen some unbelievable levels of bickering and fighting and it's really childishness and like negativity and broken friendships all just predicated on this stuff now coming into this event what was great about the two weeks we had in romania everything was fine there was none of that there was no ego we all knew it was going to be a tough show we all knew you know fuck all the old boys are back together some of us it's our last ride let's try and make it work and just do a good show and no drama and no bullshit no flare-ups and we were all like we're all very different people now we've all matured a lot you know especially those of us who've spent some time outside of the freelancing circle and as i said on twitter you know i saw this major as a gift anyway there was no way i was going to create any drama or be involved in any drama because i didn't even ex I, I shouldn't have been there you know i shouldn't have been hosting the damn thing in the first place oh yeah and obviously all drama is turbocharged by the fact none of us get any sleep <laughs> that's a, well casters actually get sleep the host sleep pattern is always the worst because you have to be first one in last one out you open the show you close the show you sit around watching all of the games in between planning your segments there's no rest for you uh casters if you're doing an afternoon game you sleep into the afternoon you're doing an evening game, you know, you, you come in in the evening. You do a morning game, you do your game and you leave. So, casters get it better, right? That's just also the reality. But I would also argue, yeah, we go back and forth on this. I think casters is a maybe a higher pressure job than being the host because people won't come back and watch my hosting segments. People will go back and watch a game. And if you have a shit performance in a game and you ruin the game, a lot of fans will fuck you up about that. So they're, they're probably under more pressure than a, than a host in general. So cast the drama is always a given pretty much in every esport I've ever been in. Certainly back in StarCraft, it was crazy. It was a lot more cutthroat and fucked up than, than CSGO. But CSGO is kind of like a middle of the pack compared to scenes where no one cared, like Call of Duty 4, which was wicked. And people were just like, I'm not, I'm not going to cast the final so I can drink more. You know, that was, that was the attitude. So there's always, there's always cast the drama, right? Always. But I wasn't expecting any this time. But this is the first event I've been at where a caster has been essentially deported <laughs> in the middle of a tournament. Like, just gone. See ya. We're just getting updates on WhatsApp coming through from Sado. Yeah, my charm's not working. I'm off, guys. They're putting me on a plane. 
there's armed guards, I'm on a plane, I'm like, this, this, none of this can't be real, for fuck's sake. But that's essentially, like, what happened, right? So, as I said, by the time we touched down, because remember, we only knew as we were getting on the plane, we didn't know if there was going to be a compromise, we didn't know if he could fly back to Romania, we didn't know if he was going to have to fly back to Canada, we didn't know if he was going to go to Canada, get go to the embassy, get it resolved, and fly out the next day. That was even talked about. Like, Sado was saying, listen, I'll come back, like, because he's just crazy like that and wanted to do the event. We get down, we, we, we touch down, and we are told, like, listen, we're all furiously what's happened, like, Let's work this out. Let's have a talk about the schedule. Now, to the specifics of the drama. And this is a tough thing to talk about because uh, I have never had an issue with, with uh, James Bardolf at all. And in fact, he stood up for me. If you remember the famous Hell in a Cell incident, Dream Act were trying to pull me off the broadcast. It was James Bardolf who said, this is a face it broadcast and Richard is finishing and closing our show. I've never had any personal issues with him at all. I've never had any arguments with him at all. I uh, generally think he's a good guy. But what he did at this event was the most diva shit I've ever seen at any esports event ever. Also left out a few crucial details in his version that he put out publicly. Basically what happened was, the original schedule, uh, it was Anders and Semler, and Moses and Sado doing the semis, and Chad... Uh, and Alex doing the final. That was the original schedule, right? So James and DDK didn't get a semi-final. Now, I also didn't say anything before the event, because it would be really unprofessional and not cool, but also real talk. James and DDK have done, like, I think two of two CSGO events, both of them summits, in the last 18 months. They shouldn't have been at the major. I mean, that's, that's the end of that. I get it's a throwback major, and I shouldn't have been at the major, Fine, I accept that. If I hadn't have been at the major, you wouldn't have heard a single peep out of me. But just to put it into context, two events in 18 months, and we fuck over Harry and Hugo and Launders and Scrawny by not having them there. Nah, that that sucks and it wasn't fair. And I'm not I'm not two faced. I told the guys to their face, like sort of at the event, you know, in a, in a lesser robust way than that. I just said, listen, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. You know, I don't. I, 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 if it was down to me, I would have hired different casters but it isn't it's good to see you again you know whatever you know i think dan in particular started out not great we all saw the sheriff clip right we start he started out not great uh because he's been doing a lot of valorant and it is a it is a different game in many ways and um, he got better and you saw flashes of the old ddk and 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 james at the event and that's great right but anyway just keep in mind that was the original schedule james and ddk got a quarterfinal and the show match which by the way i think the show match is absolutely perfect for the comedy style of like ddk and james they're great with the crowd and obviously sometimes the crowd is a little bit low energy waiting for the final in the show match so i didn't see that as a problem spoiler all casters hate doing doing the show match and actually consider doing the show match an insult didn't know that found that out <laughs> this event yeah i know right crazy eh because for me i did the show match at boston with henry and that's like one of the coolest moments in my career i guess i'm just a cretin who knew pgl panicked when sado wasn't coming and didn't wait for us because to be fair to pgl because i'm always fair they had been sort of told we need the schedule as soon as possible so we can prep for our games by the casters and the analysts. And so they rushed out a revised schedule. Slight problem. In this revised schedule, Moses got one quarterfinal, the Virtus Pro quarterfinal, and didn't do another game the entire event. So everyone else got two or three games. Baby Moses got one and arguably probably the worst game of the bunch. And now James and DDK were in the semis. And James and DDK are doing the show match. And they got the Vitality Na'Vi quarterfinal as well. So a really good quarterfinal, a semifinal, and the show match. When James says publicly that a semifinal got took away from him, not true. Because he never had a semifinal in the first place. In the second revised schedule, which was essentially a clerical error. And it should never have been sent out to the group because no one had agreed shit. PGL just rushed it. He did have a semifinal. Anyway, now, 
a lot of people were like, why is Moses getting fucked over and only getting one game? Because Sado isn't there. And I, I agree with that, by the way. And I also agree that Moses is a better caster on a technical level, <laughs> which is irrelevant. And my opinion on that is irrelevant. But just so we're all transparent, that's where I'm at mentally. And I also agree people who are actively working CSGO events should be getting more at a major because isn't that what a major is about? Also, just point of information, during the major, James Bardolph was casting that Apex tournament PGL were running at the same time. So, you know. Now, there is politics in broadcast groups and hiring decisions and all of this. And obviously, Moses Anders and Semler are all pals. I'm try I try and be pals with everybody, you know? But also analysts uh, were uh, uh, pals with, with those guys. Maniac's like just a neutral guy. He's kind of new with all what a baptism of fire it was for him. Blair is obviously new as well. But generally, the group felt it wasn't fair on Moses. So the group got together and said, that schedule's whack. Why don't we keep it so DDK and James do a quarterfinal and the show match and we give Moses and Anders... A semi-final so Anders ends up doing both semis but we just essentially replace Anders for Sadakist and then I think we then came up with the idea of oh for the first quarterfinal Moses does we'll let him do it with Semler and then that way it evens out the number of games nobody gets more than three games at the major under this schedule Chad and uh, Alex got two but one of them was the final we were trying to spread it out as much as possible. The group agrees that's the way we're going to do it. And they say, listen, we should tell PGL to revise the schedule. Now, all of this has happened in about two, maybe three hours. So keep in mind, by the way, everyone understands why James is angry. We just don't understand the degree that it got to. So for those three hours, James thinks he's going to do a semi with, with Dan. Me being me, I'm sat with the guys and I'm going, listen i can help with this i keep in mind by this point pgl weren't particularly happy that the casters couldn't play nice and disagreed with the schedule in other words they don't know moses they do know james and ddk they were much happier to fuck over moses than they were to take something away from james and ddk this is what i mean about politics guys it's silly so i said why don't i see if i can smooth all this over and i'll go to pgl and explain our position and the group went, yes, Richard, you're very good at talking. And you know everyone. And you're the old man. And I went, all right, cool. I will be dad at this event. I will be dad. So dad went to talk to all of the PGL guys and explain why we wanted to change the roster, uh, the schedule rather. And they said, listen, we'll do it. <laughs> Don't even know why this would ever happen to me. We will do it. We agree. But you have to go and break the news to Dan and James. You, Richard Lewis, who doesn't work for PGL. Lucky me. I'm like, okay, I suppose I will do that. Just <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's how we get it, in, in my mind, fixed, right? And listen, I can't speak to everyone's motivations... But the reason I was on board with the fix was that I didn't think Dan and James had been on their A game until later on in the tournament. I also think the optics of having a, a full-time Valorant caster casting a semi-final of a CSGO major is fucked up. I said to people, like, don't even say the V word on the event because I don't think that's very cool. I didn't. Duncan did, of course. And Moses has been active throughout the year. So... You know, it just it, it just made, you know, I, I just thought it was a better show for the fans. I mean, because that's all I give a fuck about. I don't really care about any of this nonsense. I don't even work events. But as I said, before I went to the major, this major's got to be the most important major. It's We've got to break records. It's got to be a really smooth broadcast. It's got to really showcase everything great about the game. It's got to have compelling storylines because we are facing an existential crisis for the future of our game. So I just thought this will be a better show. It's not, a, it's not an indictment on Dan. It's not an indictment on James, who've contributed so much to CSGO history. But for this show, at this time, I was sort of in agreement with the rest of the group. So I got to tell James, first of all, 
I, I message him and say I'm coming, and then I forget I'm in this massive like two tower hotel building. Takes me ages to get there, and obviously he probably knows what's going on. So I get to him and I just say like, listen. The groups talk to PGL, and now it's going to be Moses and Anders that do the semi-final. I won't get into the details of what was said. It wasn't very nice, you know. I tried to be, uh, you know, as understanding and as neutral as as possible. But you know, it. No one likes being told essentially, "I'm taking something away that you think you have away from you," irrespective of the reasons. He basically told me to fuck off. After I said, because he said, listen, I'll believe it when I hear it from PGL. And I said, PGL are the ones who sent me. And at that point, it was just like, you know, you can fuck off. And I was like, okay, fair. There's a drink for you at the bar. I'm sorry. Bought him a drink. Uh, left it there, right? And thought we would still all be professionals and we would all get through the event. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm leaving out loads of other little bits and pieces which i'm sure duncan will all bring up anyway but i didn't think this was a catastrophic moment at the event in terms of the drama fallout i thought we would be pissed off in the short term but we would just ace the job and then you know maybe we laugh about it six to twelve months down the line maybe we never talk to each other again whatever but it's, the event would be structurally intact so we all did it we all agreed that was how it was going to be and then it gets round to, obviously, the game James and DDK did. And basically, unbeknownst to anyone, including DDK, James had told PGL, stick the show match up your ass. I'm not doing it. And then obviously set up that tweet about the old boys club, which meant all of us. And a lot of people were like speculating because he said Richard Lewis in the old boys club. I don't know if he purpose purposefully left me out and made a point of distinguishing me because at least I'd gone to his face and told him. So I don't know how he feels about me. We're probably never going to talk again in all honesty because I thought this was a really lousy thing to do. And I think DDK knew about the tweet and he said, I I'd rather you didn't tweet you know i think he said i'm gonna tweet this and dan said something like i'd rather you didn't i don't want any drama and then obviously i don't think dan knew he was gonna throw back to us like that so you probably can see it on my face i'm like oh here we fucking go ah yes the old boys and i knew in that moment what was happening there so obviously we get that out the way we come off the show james is already saying goodbye to everybody He's leaving the country on the next plane. So all the people he wants to talk to in the green room, he's like, yeah, bye, 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 bye. Doesn't come say goodbye to any of us. And he's out. He's back at the hotel and flying out in the morning. Then, obviously, there's more follow-up tweets from James where he, he says, like, we fucked him out of the semi-final. We took it away from him. We were blackmailing PGL or whatever. It's not what happened. It's not how it went down. He shouldn't have had the semi. That was the original schedule. The Sadakist incident made PGL panic and change the schedule. They felt a duo would be better. There's no nice way of framing it. It was just a tantrum, essentially. I, I would have even said, if someone tells you to stick a show match up your ass and you let them on your broadcast to begin with, eh, I don't know. I don't like bringing bullshit into the broadcast I because I, the broadcast lives forever. I've said this a number of times. I, I just think it's the cardinal sin because now... That VOD lives forever. People are going to come back and watch the VOD. They might see that. They're going to, oh, what's all that about? The drama's now part of the show. It lives forever attached to the show like a barnacle on the side of a ship. And I don't like that. I don't think that's, um, I don't think that's very cool. Because, you know, it should be about the games and it should be about the players and it should be about the fans. So, anyway, people are asking, why didn't we just do a TriCast? I mean, first of all... Those guys haven't done a TriCast for a long, long time. The TriCast was a byproduct of ESL fuckery, I want to say. I don't think it was anything they ever had planned sort of initially to begin with. It was just a way of accommodating those guys. Given all of the sound problems we'd had, and it, you would have had to add an entire another caster setup and caster PC to an already very fragile... So nobody wanted to do that. So that wasn't an option, nor is it particularly fair to the cast the pairings. Also, I should add to this, and again, we'll go into more details of this. When the news got broke, it was clear to me, James wasn't just pissed that the semi-final got changed. He was pissed off he didn't get a semi-final to begin with. And basically said he felt every other caster had been shit at the event. 
which was another reason why I was like, wow. Like, I just wasn't inclined at that point to sort of, like, try and style it out. Now, obviously, he was very angry, but I was like, wow, I thought Sada kissed and Moses, despite not having a lot of practice time, were doing really good. I thought this was Semler's best event in a long time. I thought him and Anders actually rolled back the years here. I thought, obviously, Chad and, and Alex established themselves as the go-to uh, duo you know, in the here and now, uh, you know, I thought everyone was doing a really good job, you know, the only person I heard who even, who even sound, well, the only people I heard that were rusty with, with James and Dan, honestly, to my ear, you know, but that's to be expected, they haven't done a lot of CS, you know, that surprised me, and what I realized was in that moment, basically, the thing he was pissed off about was not getting the semi to begin with, that was then compounded by it being given and then changed, and so he didn't want to stick around and do the show match. And again, I just think, like, listen, I just think that sucks for the fans, man. You know? I get it. I understand everyone wants to do the best games and the most prestigious stuff and do the finals. And, you know, everyone's got pride in their craft. But ultimately, I've had to do stuff I didn't want to do on a broadcast for the good of the fans, for the good of the show. I've had to take back, with back seats before. I mean, keep in mind, I used to be an analyst and I moved into hosting because that was where, you know, I wasn't a great analyst and we needed somebody to shore up the role. But who's cooler on the desk, the host or the analyst? Obviously, it's the analysts, you know, but I took it for the show, essentially, for what works. And it's basically like this, you know, hosts want to be analysts, analysts want to be casters. I don't even know what fucking casters want to be. God, probably, <laughs> you know, just this outrageous hierarchical structure that you know yeah players there you go players or coaches but maybe not so much now eh so all in all that drama was like it sort of ruined the last of the high spirits at the event along with the saddo thing because we all wanted matt to be there and it was a pretty rude awakening i've never you know like I say i've never had any issues with james i couldn't believe it had all gone so sour so quick you know and ddk to his credit he didn't like it but he came and had a chat with us about it and took it on the chin and, you will notice, casted the show match with Moses. Now, the drama doesn't end there, right? And not a lot of people picked up on this. Basically, I like Dan. I've always liked Dan. And I, I think he took this one really well, even though he was clearly disappointed. In the same way, he sort of took the feedback of me saying, listen... You know, you, Valorant is your main gig right now. Like, this is this is the farewell, essentially, because I know you're going back to that, and you're killing it over there, you know? Obviously, there were more tweets coming out uh, from James. I think there was some exchange between him and Sir Scoot where they were talking about an old boys club. And obviously, casters, they tell you, I don't read Reddit. Well, Semler literally doesn't read Reddit, and who can blame him, as we'll get to in a second. They all tell you, I don't read Reddit. I don't read social media d d during an event. Well, actually, taller people type type in scoots, question mark. S Scott made a really good point. He said, if you ever expect to do a semi, if you think you should, or you think you should be doing the final, you put it in at the contract stage. Because people don't realize this is how these events work. Every, right? You basically agree to come and be a caster for a set amount of days. And no, whether you cast or not, you get paid for those days. Right? So... Everybody just sits and lets the TO decide who they want to put them where. That's how it works, guys. So some people will always get more. Some people will always do more finals, you know, whatever. All of this speculation on Reddit about who the old boys club was was like filtering into the green room. People were like, well, I didn't do anything, you know? Why am I getting... I mean, obviously for like Maniac doing his debut major and he's on the desk when james goes and back to richard in the old boys club maniac's not in the old boys club he couldn't be further blair isn't in the old boys club couldn't be further from the fucking old boys club if they tried literally major debutants both of them like if this is the old boys club you know but obviously it's a it's a ridiculous framing as well because out of all of the talent that has ever worked a cs events there's only two of us that have ever been in hiring decisions. Me when I was at WSOE and James all throughout his uh, face it career. We, you know, we are the power structure. <laughs> so it's not it's not similar, you know. Oh yeah, and Thorin at Flashpoint. My bad, I did forget that. He made all the hiring decisions for talent at Flashpoint. So three three of us. There's only ever three of us that have ever been in a position. It's easy to forget about Flashpoint though, isn't it? Keck W. So anyway, the Reddit threads are out of control. 
and people are saying shit like, this is all Semler. This is all Semler and Anders. Semler and Anders have done the most finals out of anybody. Semler and Anders obviously have bandied together to help their friend Little Momo. And people are just on their phones because obviously camaraderie dead in the green room. Everyone exhausted, just like, fuck, get me to the end of this event. We're all just scrolling and looking through on social media, right? It's a wall of abuse. But anyway, whatever. Fuck it. It's over now. Band-Aid's been ripped off. Let's just do the show. Now, unfortunately, Anders was doing both semis, as you know. He put himself under tremendous pressure to deliver in both. He did, obviously, the first one with Semler and um, was really going for it. And basically, all of the negativity and all of the stress and all of the additional pressure that had been put on him and this idea that it's all him because he gets both semifinals, he just couldn't handle it. He just fried his brain. He just fried his brain. And so Anders basically, after he did that semi-final, which, by the way, I thought he did a great job in, he just tweeted out saying, I can't, like, I can't do it. I think I did a bad job. I need some time to reflect on my work. He was just basically at his absolute lowest point. Because, you know, these events are mad stressful. We're already, by this point, we've already broke the record. We've got over, a, like, a million and a half people watching us. And everyone's being told, you shouldn't be doing it. You're shit. You're bad. You're, 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 you fucked over our favourite casters. It should be James and DDK doing it, not you. Just blah, blah into his brain. Now, obviously, Semler, what people don't realise about Semler is there is no phasing Semler ever again after the way this community has kicked the shit out of him. And as I said, in 2016, 2017, that year when he was working E-League, he had two horrific things happen to him in his personal life. I think he's talked about it on one of his own podcasts or on another podcast, but I'm never sure what I can and can't say, so I never go into it. But he had two horrific things happen happening to, to him, not to mention he gets called alt-right, piece of shit, anti-vax, all this nonsense. That's just not who he is at all. Now, this is how he spends his time. He does mountain climbing, he does Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and he's fucking woo Nothing gets to Semler. Nothing gets to Semler at all. So even though everyone was accusing Semler of being a mad cunt and that he'd orchestrated the whole thing, he literally just had, he was just like, listen, I'll go along with what people want. Maybe there's another way. He was always like the mediator, completely chill, completely relaxed. All of the theory crafting about him being behind it all just couldn't have been further from the fucking truth. When Anders basically said, I, I cannot do it, I'm too stressed. Basically, Semler just came along and said, mate, I've got you, I'll do it. And Anders and all of us were like, you're going to get absolutely brutalised. And he went, so fucking what? Let's do a show, let's do it. So Semler basically stood in for Anders like last minute thinking that semi he just done was going to be his last one he came in and said don't worry anders mate i've got you big hug you go rest it off mate try not to think about it get your head together right i'll see you in the green room went straight in to do the other semi and also because he's fucking hilarious he took a picture of him doing this <laughs> on instagram as if he was the Illuminati and he'd orchestrated the whole thing just to fuck with people. Absolute king shit. What more do you want? Absolute king shit. Keep in mind as well, we fought to have Moses Sanders in the semi. That's what sort of caused the whole problem. And in the end, we got Moses and Semler. And listen, I thought the Moses and Semler pair had actually worked at the event. And I thought Semler in both semifinals crushed it. I even saw a Reddit thread where it was like, this is Semler's best event in ages. That that one's got to go. Get that. Get rid of that one. Downvote that one. Basically, by the end of it, we were like, why did we even... <laughs> like, why did any of this happen? Like, why... we None of us got what we wanted in the end. Just a bunch of drama and, and nonsense. And then, of course, the final comes rolling around. And it's... <laughs> this is the other part of it. Remember, the old boys club, right? The power structure... Chad and Alex, because of the everyone hates ESL and they're seen as ESL shills, right? Partially true. <laughs> they weren't expecting to be hired. They'd even said to me prior to the major, I have a good major, mate. You're probably going to get hired based on what I'm hearing and, and we're not. And I'm going, there's no way. I wouldn't even work an event if there's any of that politics and you get overlooked. I wouldn't do it. 
and obviously they were there, but they were just like super happy to be there the entire time. Like, yes, Mr. PGL, sir. Thanks, Mr. PGL, sir. We'll do whatever you say, Mr. PGL, sir. And they basically did their quarterfinal, did the final. It was their stadium debut. You know, they crushed it. They did a great job. But what a weird, fucked up situation for them. Because obviously, you understand, they used to do in like ESL. All in all, <laughs> the caster drama was like just fucking dumb as fuck. It was so stupid and out of left field. And all basically stemmed from one unfortunate event segueing into a knee jerk reaction, segueing into feedback, which segued into arguments. The old esports classic. Now, I'll also, I'll also, because we, we will absolutely be talking about this. Duncan was furious <laughs> about this going into the last day, right? So I'm just going to give you a little, this is a little delicious morsel. I'm going to give you some details of a story that Duncan will tell in its entirety on the next By the Numbers. Because, listen, Duncan had held it together really well. But on the last day, something happened to Duncan that he could not forgive. And so my my day on the desk was like, is he going to take us all down with him? I was like, basically, I'm looking at him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be all dead. I'll be all dead now, of course. That's where I was at, right? Trying to run a fucking show. Also, by the way, this is another interesting little factoid for you. I'm sure some of you know what a hosting job is meant to be, right? I'm talking. Hi, I'm Richard Lewis and welcome to the show. These are my friends. Haha, <laughs> look at this thing that happened in the game. And while I'm talking, right, somebody from the show is in my ear talking to me and saying, listen, I've got this graphic coming. Talk about Nico. I'm going to bring up a graphic for Nico. Footage of Nico on your screen now. Right, I need you to start talking about Simple now. We're going to bring up a graphic about Simple and, and on. Right, and that's like how it goes, right? Well, okay. Here's what happened on the sh on this show, <laughs> particularly when we were in the stadium. Because, okay, so at E-League, I had three voices in my head. Well, four if you count the, the evil ones. Uh, but but no, I had three voices from the production. So I have a, I have a producer, a, a director, and, and like an assistant director slash, slash producer. And they take me all over the place and say, what I have to do? Can you do this? And can you ramp up the energy? And no, no, whatever. At PGL. Right, here's what I'm going to get told, right, at the start of a segment. And we are live in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and live. And then I would have to freestyle the 10, 14 minutes. <laughs> right? I'd be, I'd, you probably saw it. You probably saw it loads where I was leaning over and pressing the button. And right, oh, the other thing that's supposed to happen is every time you're on camera, someone's supposed to go on camera. So you're not like they're scratching your ass or whatever. None of that. None of that, of course. So every time you saw me while I was leaning forward to press the button, that was me going, what's coming next? Where do you want me to go? How long do we have? You know, just essential information I need to know to run the show. None of that. And then just at the end, I would just get, you can throw the casters now. That was it. Those 14 minutes in between was just me improvising the entire time. <laughs> so that, that's what it was like. That is literally like... Duncan did a tweet saying like some inexperienced hosts would have drowned in these waters. That's what he means. Because I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I didn't know if I brought something up, a graphic would pop up. I was going... And I think we've got a replay of that. Do we? <laughs> you know, like who knows? Who, who knows? Mate? But basically just somehow it all held together. So there was that. But anyway, why did Duncan have a hair across his ass on the last day? Well, it was justified. Because, as you can see from having to tell talent to their face, yeah, you're not doing the semi-final. I was like essentially a PGL employee at this event, right? <laughs> it's just so dumb. They said on the, uh, like, three days before the show match, I think it was, they said, Richard, we're really behind. Will you organize the show match? Right? And I said, yes. Go on then. I will take, it's not like I'm sleeping anyway. I will take on the additional work of, uh, but don't, don't worry, they paid me for it in the end. I made sure of that. But I will take on the additional work of creating a show match. Now, all I'd been told about the show match before I had to, cre before I had to go and do it was get right who's bringing out the trophy is going to be on the show match and all off my is going to be on the show match. And it's going to be Team Sweden versus 
somebody else, right? And the original plan was to have five members of the talent pool play five Swedish legends. And I was like, we don't have enough talent, especially now that James has left. <laughs> so, you know, because he would have been a natural to, you know, he was meant to be casting it, right? Well, he's gone. <laughs> so I was like, listen, how about this for an idea? Team Get Right, Team Thorin. Because it makes sense. Because remember, even though they're really good friends in real life, Get Right famously stood up and said, Thorin doesn't know what he's talking about. Don't listen to Thorin. So I was like, right, we'll settle this fucking beef. Uh, well, first I said to PGL, uh, Thorin will play a th uh, I think. And they're going, oh, yes. Get me Thorin. Go on. Please persuade him to do this. Please. They specifically said, make him do it. So I sat down to Duncan. And I thought I was going to have to give him the old flim flam. You know, a be the, the Duncan Whisperer. No, this will be a really good idea, Duncan. Think about it. Think about the show. Think about this. Yeah, but I'm going to get wrecked rich. That's the thing, is it? No, but if you do... So, anyway, I just said to him, do you want to captain a team for the show match? And he sort of sat there. And I went, it'll be you versus, like, Get Right. And he went, all right, then. Yeah, fuck it. So, boom. So, we had Team Thorin and Team Get Right with Olaf Meister. So, I spent my nights frantically... DMing people, emailing people, you know, <laughs> saying, do you want to be on Duncan's team? This is how you know your kindar's a fucking G. Uh, what a great kid he is and what a bright future he has because he understands branding and marketing and all of that shit. Right, I just messaged him go, do you want to play with Thorin tomorrow? And he went, what for? And I went, in the show match. And he went, oh, fuck yeah. Put me down, put me down. He, uh, whatever happens, uh, put me in. I definitely want to play the show match. I'm like, all right, cool. So it would have been Thorin, your kinder. Then I started, uh, I was trying to get some Swedes, some OG Swedes. And I think, you know, I talked to Fifth Lauren, obviously, who did end up playing. Uh, I can't even remember who, who else. The, oh, uh, did I reach out to Forrest? I can't even fucking remember now. Anyway, we were, we were trying to get like a pretty even mix of old Swedes that sort of didn't play. You know, maybe we get one current guy. Maybe have Hampus IGL it or whatever, you know. So we were doing that. I think over on the other one, Device. I said to Device, listen, think how sick it'll be. You and Thorin after all the drama playing on the team. Device goes, yeah, all right then. I'll just get clearance from NIP to play. So we would have had like Device, Yakinda, Thorin. I can't even remember. I can't. I, it's, it was so frantic. Because Device and Thorin made up at the event anyway. Because that's the other thing as well. You guys probably don't realise. But, like, we have all this stupid beef online. It's not even beef. Like, you know what I mean? You know, we all just say... It. It's just our job to say your shit. And then Duncan obviously adds... He's like the salt babe telling someone they're a cunt, isn't he? He just, he just sprinkles on, like, loads of extra stuff that it doesn't need to be there. But that's his brand, right? But we all make up when we're in person. We all make up in person. On the last night, I was saying to Nico, I was saying, like, I was saying to Nico, like, listen, mate, I know you're not a problem in this G2 lineup. Don't let that whiff get inside your head, mate. They wouldn't have even been in the final if it weren't for you. You know, we're all sat there having drinks. You know, people don't realise... Like, it, it, we are part of a mental fucked up family. And then when we get back online, we've got to do what we've got to pay the bills, you know? That was the show match. So I was there. I had like, I was four players, four or three players away from like just the best. But I think, I think the original plan was also to put Zeus on Team Thorin. I think that's where Zeus came into it. So, so you can imagine how mental this would have been. Like, the content it would have been. And so we even, this is how you know I'm not lying. We even set it up the day before. Right? Because then it became, oh no, guys, listen, we're not going to do Team Sweden because Copenhagen Flames are now going to be the team you play against. So it was going to be Thorin, Get Right, Olaf, Device, Yakindar, I think it was going to be. That's what we had to decide on, right? Versus Copenhagen Flames. Now, that wasn't my idea. And that got dropped on me at the last minute because I was trying to make Team Thorin Team Sweden, right? But we even set it up. If you go back and watch the tape, there was this bit where we were talking about Copenhagen Flames being in the show match. It was revealed. And then suddenly it wasn't Team Thorin anymore. It was Team Get Right. But Thorin didn't mind taking second billing. He didn't mind. And he said, listen, there's been no trash talk at this tournament. So I hope whoever is playing in that game tomorrow tells the Flames to fuck off back to Copenhagen to their face. And he meant him. He was going to do that. He was going to trash talk the whole time. Also, keep in mind, fucking hell, this is how mad it is. Duncan spent an afternoon, or like, going all over Stockholm, 
to find the type of mouse he uses at home, which he bought, which he found third shop in, no joke, and then the day, the morning of the finals, it just gets put in the production chat that we're all in, obviously. These are the teams, and Thorin's not there. <laughs> and I'm just like, well then. So I wasted all that time. Duncan got completely fucked over. And I think we got denied something that would have been hilarious and actually one of the best show matches of all time. And then... <laughs> <laughs> Thorin just went I guess it's time to bust out the LeBron jersey and I was like alright well <laughs> you did it to yourself in many ways PGL you did it to yourself and so that's why he even said on the broadcast he was going this might be my last major this might be your last major I hope it's someone's last major we all know who <laughs> but enough about that literally just said that on air while wearing the LeBron jersey I was like ah. Oh. God help me. But in the end, fortunately, the uh, the show match was uh, mercifully engaging. It wasn't boring or anything. Copenhagen Flames, guys were all good guys. Kindar's a good guy. Obviously, all the Swedish legends were there. Zeus turned up wearing a rival sponsor to the event on his T-shirt, which somehow was allowed. <laughs> he, he remains a, a cunt. He can't help himself. And then, uh, yeah, we basically fucking did the final and everything was great i think actually if you look at the last segment of the show the games the cast the desk i think that's you know it's up there with it's up there with all the great majors and obviously as i've said first day worst day is the esports mantra no one ever remembers what you do on day one but this was a ridiculous one because Everybody forgot what we'd done for like 11 days, and then on 12, 12 days. Our ah, best major of all time, I think, yeah. I just got here, and I'm just going to declare best major of all time. And then, the end. <laughs> oh, the end. It's just like, yes, you're champions! Right? Navi! And, and then, boom, it's just like, no, nope, I'm going to propose. I'm like, oh... <laughs> what's happening what's happening when that happened we're just looking at each other on the desk do we even react to this we, we're gonna have to so and then all the drama that's come out off the back of that by the way if you've been <laughs> reading it don't recommend you do actually but nothing's private in the cis region so anyway that is not even 10 percent <laughs> of every like of all the shit we're gonna talk about on by the number that's not even 10 percent of it because it was, it was rough and tough. Only the strong survived at this major, and I barely made it out, which is why I spent two days in bed. Also, just to, just to let you know, good news, everyone. Traveling in and out of the UK is like fucking, what's that one with, um, is it City of Men or whatever, where no one can have babies anymore or whatever the fuck? Yeah, it was just ridiculous. Uh, my nostrils have been, children of men, that's it. My nostrils have been buggered within an inch of their lives it's like right i had to fill in like three forms or something just to get on a plane you know, passenger location form i'm like what did i get the vaccine for <laughs> can i can i get on a plane like no sorry mate you uh, you still have to be tested i had to come back get a test i got a test before i left doesn't matter got to get another one when you come back to the uk you have to run around send it off to a lab so i had to do that on one of my days off oh god help me jesus i had to go back and fucking i had to run around putting a test in a post box while i've got to do another one in six days definitely don't have rona oh mate it's so mental they sent me two and i'm so terrified because when you look on the government fucking website Right, which, by the way, just gives you conflicting information depending on whether or not they've updated the pages. It literally, like, says, if you fill in any details on this form wrong, you may face 10 years in prison. 10 years in prison for a fucking typo. Are you all right? Yeah. So I'm like, oh, God, please, please, you kid. Yeah, 10 years. Look it up. No joke. So I'm like, fucking every time one of these tests turns up, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll have another then, shall I? Beep, uploading it on my phone. Here I am, Mr. Government. Look at my... You know, fucking hell. So ridiculous. And I got to do another in like six days. Because I was even thinking about flying out to the eSports Awards, but I can't be asked. 
I'm not doing I'm not doing that again. I'm not leaving the country till it's gone back to normal now. This is fucking I don't wanna What countries have you been in? What have you filled in your you know forms for this country and that country and this country nah. It's so massively inconvenient just to fly now, still. And only in the UK. Meanwhile, of course, in Sweden, I was walking around wearing a mask because I carried on the COVID protocols. By the way, the PGL COVID protocols were sick. I have said on the record, nobody can run a COVID bubble in esports. PGL did. It was legit. Everyone in the company is double vaxxed. They had testing on site. Like actual day for every day we worked the event, they had a scientist from the government in like hazmat clothes or whatever. You could just go to and get a test anytime. They had temperature checks when you came in to see if anyone had a fever so they can pull you to one side. There was masked areas. So you're doing all of that. We were in the hotel, obviously curfew, you know, we didn't go out. So in Romania, there was like zero chance of like anyone getting COVID despite being a hotspot. All that worry and apprehension we'd had going in was like sort of unjustified when we saw actually what. So they had like industrial cleaning teams come in. They had it all vent ventilated and all the air sucked out every like six hours or something so it, it was unreal and it just sort of puts into perspective by the way how stupid some of the other esports events where people are popped for covid at are put it this way as well at ti i think they did seven thousand covid tests and only three people popped from the on-site testing some people turned up with covid which they might have picked up on their travels or whatever but even that was pretty good. Anyway, the traveling just sucked balls. And so when I got back, I was like, oh no, please just let me rest. But I've been running around doing tests and all of this. So I'm just going to wait because apparently they were meant to get rid of all these additional measures at the end of October. And I wanted to go out to Malta to see Henry anyway before going to the States. So whatever, we'll wait and see. Oh, that was the other thing. Shit. That guy from Nip. That AF329 or whatever he's called. I went to a bar, as is my way. <laughs> I went to a bar. I went to a sports bar in Sweden. I'm walking into the bar and a guy comes out with the crowd's long hair, you know, screaming, Richard, Richard. I'm like, oh, please. No, no, no. No, please. Not a fight. I can't. I'm not allowed. Kelly Milkies will be tweeting about how I'm not allowed in Sweden in the first place. I can't. I was like, no. No, it can't have been Lauder. He had long hair, remember? It's, you know, let's keep it real. I was like, no. So I'm just like, oh, who's this cunt? It's probably a fan, right? Probably a fan. It turned out it was that AF329 guy, uh, or whatever his fucking name is, from Nip. And he was going, Richard, you have been saying things about me online. I went, yeah, I do have a tendency to do that, mate. Is sort of my, my, my way, isn't it? And he was going, but uh, you have said that... Uh, we did not help bring the major to Sweden. And I said, yeah, I don't really think you did, mate. Don't think you played a major part in it, frankly. And he was going like, this is not true. You must now hear my side. And I went, I'm having a drink, mate. I don't. I definitely don't need to hear your side. And he was going, but you will. You will listen to me. And I'm going, no, mate, I'm definitely not going to listen to you. In fact, I'm going to go into this bar and I'm going to start drinking heavily. <laughs> Just, so you can do what you want to do, mate. And he was like, he was like, Squaring up, like he was like shouting, You will not listen! You will not listen! I'm going, Fuck off, mate. And he just like walked off. So I did a tweet. I was going, Just, I, I tweeted like, Just a heads up, there is some like psycho doing an impersonation of you outside this bar and like nobody noticed it or anything. But that's what that was about. I'm like, Fuck, Why is everyone a psycho? Why is everyone a psycho? I'm just trying to have a pint. I don't give a fuck about your nonsense. But uh, actually, uh, on that point as well, it was a pretty affirming event for me. Um, because obviously, remember, you know, I quit doing events because of all the death threats and stuff, uh, of which <laughs> there are plenty. But um, all the fans that I met at the event were all, like, really, really friendly. Someone did throw a beer on me, I think, on the... Was it this penultimate night? Someone did launch a beer on me in a plastic cup. But, you know, it might have been a coincidence. <laughs> but uh, other than that... There was never an undercurrent of violence. I was out there, I was just walking around by myself, talking to fans, taking pictures with everyone, did shots with a bunch of fans. I got fucking annihilated one night. I don't even remember it. I was, I was, apparently I was in good form, so that's all right. I didn't make a cunt of myself. But there was a super secret floor in the hotel that only the cool kids got invited to. 
and someone told me about it and I, I turned up there and Too Good was there and a bunch of old school esports people. I was fucking absolutely blind drunk. So I don't really remember what happened, but everyone was like, ha ha, you were funny last night. Brilliant, perfect, yeah. Too Good looks like Gandalf now. He's got like fucking long grey hair, you know. He's looking very distinguished. Oh yeah, fucking hell. The D's nut sign with Vince's face. Fuck me. Fuck me when I saw that. Was in the green room. And just see Vince's psycho face pop up with D's nuts written on it. Like confident play from Stalin. He's the second top fragger on uh, Heroic right now. Nine That's just gone out to like one and a half million people or something. I was like fucking just crying with laughter about that. So there was some good signs from Carv and the boys, all the BTN regulars. It was a really affirming event. Every fan I talked to was super nice. You know, all what, all very complimentary. All had the social intelligence to understand when to leave. There was one lad I talked to from Ireland. I literally was talking to him for an hour about Newcastle. He was a big football fan. And, we, and, you know, he had a real thick Irish accent. You're fucking Steve Bruce is a fucking cunt, isn't he? I'm fucking, yes, yes. You are speaking my language into my veins. So I spent one hour, like, just... Because, oh, oh, that was why I got fucked up. This is esports all over. There was um, an old friend of mine was launching another esports company. And the same bar that we had the after party in, the day before, he'd hired it for a launch party. And so I was just in there to get to just to get a drink because it was open. And I walk in and I see all these like really old school esports people like fucking hell, you're, you're still in this. And it was like, oh, yeah, come over. That's when I had that giant bottle of Carlsberg. Basically free drinks all night. Come in, Richard. <laughs> all right. Do you remember this? Do you remember this? And do you remember this? And so I was like, oh, yeah, this is great. So, yeah, it was pretty good. All things told. The drinking, I mean, <laughs> not the event, which has shaved years off my life. Um, even though I do look younger for some reason on, on on the return. I mean, again, we'll get into it by the numbers, but yeah, the crowd reaction was a bit quiet. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's because basically the Globen, it's called, the or now the Avicii, isn't it? The Avicii Arena. It's a, glo it's a globe, like a snow globe, right? Basically what happened there was, because it's a globe, the you have to have a special way of like doing the acoustics, Otherwise, they sound really shit. I think we ran into a similar problem in the uh, Fox Theatre, you know, when we did it in Atlanta, because it's like an old school theatre with very high ceilings, because they need the sound from the stage to carry up, you know, for the performances. A lot of people said to me the crowd was really quiet there, but I can tell you when you were in there, that, that wasn't true. Basically, PGL did their own sound in that event, and what they recommend <laughs> when you hire the arena, oh, at least this is what I got told, no reason to doubt it. What they did basically was there's a special team, a special technical team that know immediately how to deck it out, depending on what kind of show you're doing and put the mics in the right place. And basically, PGL were like, no, we'll use our own guys. So, you know. <laughs> it, they call it eSports. What are you going to do? At least it was fixed for the final. But yeah. You know, like, the event was, like, fucking unbelievably... Uh, it was unbelievably tough. Like, really hard event on everybody in terms of just wear and tear, no days off, long schedules, being a bit frustrated about the end product, camaraderie dead, personal relationships blowing up. Also, as I alluded to briefly, and I don't really want to talk about this on the stream, but um, there, were, there were a number of people. I mean, obviously, the Blair ones came out since. Obviously, what happened with... James Banks, I mean, went out there and already kind of put things like, oh, fuck, you know, that, that sucks. And then Blair's father fell ill while we were there. And so even though he's kind of estranged from his dad, it's like, you know, do you want to travel just in case something happens or, you know, whatever? And he's like, no, 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 I want to do the major. And so he did the major. And by the end of the major, his, his dad passed away. I mean, this is why I hated all the caster drama as well. Because, like, it's like, you know, if ever there was sort of a moment, you know, for reflection, there are bigger and more important things than this, than ego, you know. But, yeah, that didn't happen. People didn't really have a broad perspective. But everyone was a fucking trooper, man. Like you say, there were, there were other people. Could have just as easily gone home. No one would have blamed them. But, yeah, yeah you know, I just thought, fuck. Just puts, you know, all of that, just really put a dampener on the whole thing. But the main thing is, you'll always be able to go back and have the show. I mean, personally, 
I just wouldn't, you know, I don't think I've ever gone public during an event with problems at the event. I don't even think I did it for that Dr. Avela event we did in Serbia, which was literally just one of the worst events of all time. You wait until the end of the event, because the last thing you want is you be overshadowing the event. But, you know, not everyone, not everyone thinks that way, so... Uh, yeah, and the lipstick. I can answer the lipstick. So, because the studio was doing neon, right? There was a cyberpunk studio. So how they achieved that neon look was by changing the colour palette mix in what was going out. And this meant certain colours were really vivid. Now, for some reason, you can see my lips. Right? I have pretty pale lips. I have uh, pretty. I have pretty pale lips, and um, you know they're not even big lips. They're like pretty thin. You know, just an average pair of lips, really. Basically, fucking for whatever reason, my particular shade of lip pink just was when they were bumping up the vibrance or whatever it was. Just fucking was going like, Wah. like I saw a pic. Listen, I saw a picture of me. Right, basically, my lips were so outrageously pink i looked like fucking pauline out of league of gentlemen like that's literally how i was looking on fucking camera right? i was like what the? I, was, I even right it was so mad because i think one morning I, I did introduce the show like where i was like oh hello i'm richard pink lips or something and <laughs> which is probably a bit unprofessional or, or whatever you know but the first the first week get all the jokes out they brought out the person that was responsible <laughs> esports is mental uh they brought out the person who was responsible for the studio setup the green screen and he was coming and saying yes yes uh we have the vibrance turned up and uh <laughs> it will make your lips pink uh, it seems to be so what we are gonna do and so he was literally, whenever it was my close-up shot, they were doing something to de-pink my lips. Like, oh, they thought, mate, this event, this event was so crazy. Like, like there was someone employed to make my lips less pink. And that's why it improved. I don't even know what they did. I couldn't, I couldn't explain it on a technical level, but they de-pinked me. So anyway, uh, I think I've covered all the big stuff. I've covered the drama, teased the show match story. Oh, yeah, and also the most ridiculous thing Duncan's ever said on a broadcast when he said that. He, they, they're harder to beat than a Viagra addict. Joe Biden. I don't even know why he said that. I, it doesn't even make sense. If you gave Joe Biden a Viagra, it would kill him. <laughs> what does that mean? Like, I was just, like, laughing about it with him afterwards, going, why did you say Joe Biden? He was, I don't even know. <laughs> Like, it's just so ridiculous. Yeah, the Sadakist obviously did a, did a joke as well. Sadakist's joke was, because he couldn't remember a game or a call-out or something, and he said, the Alzheimer's is setting in. Dementia, of course. I'll have to quit being a caster, and uh, at least I'll still be able to run uh, for the American presidency, right? And obviously, ha ha ha, yes, Joe Biden does have dementia, doesn't he? Um, but anyways, after he said that, there was like a thread on live stream fail, right? And the, you can imagine the comments, right? It was like, oh, this caster is unbelievably based. And then other people were going, isn't he the one that had the incident? Ah, uh, yes, right wing casters. They're all right wing in CSGO. Oh, it was like, you can imagine. It's just like, oh, get me out. Get me out of the fucking K-hole. <laughs> get me out. As if it's a political statement to say that that old man definitely his his brain is fucked like <laughs> as if as if that's in any way but as if you have to pretend well you do don't you so yeah yeah i think they all came from live stream fail to the uh cs go sub to be like look at all these far right people in esports the far right <laughs> like yeah mate <laughs> definitely what's happening i was wearing lipstick <laughs> what are you talking about can be more progressive with my bright pink lips. Ah, it was just, it was fucking crazy, mate. The whole event. These nuts.